Hey guys, today I'm taking you outside in the market here in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, where we will go over three simple but smooth transitions you guys can use to transition your shots in your videos. So this transition is a frame blocking transition in which you will use the exposure and the color of the last part of your first shot and the beginning part of your second shot to blend them together. So you'll be trying to find something that matches exposure wise and color wise for the most part to make them more seamless. I have my subject here, which is this nice lady. All right, so I got her to come back. So I have my subject. I'm going to do a slide across. Now just like this, slide across, and in the frame I'm going to have the mangoes mm -hmm. or whatever these are come into frame. And since they blocked the most of the entire frame, I can use that to transition to the second shot. So I have the green plant right here and this is going to be the beginning of the second shot. So what I'm going to do is I will press record. I'm going to come in the same motion and generally the same speed. I'm going to come across the green and come up to reveal, you know what, I wasn't happy with the tilt on that. Do the same thing, come across, same speed, come up. There we go. The first thing I'm going to do is cut my footage a couple frames after my shot is fully covered with this mystery fruit. And actually I'm going to make the cut when these dark green leaves start to show up since on the second shot the thing blocking the frame is a dark green leafed bush. On the second shot I'm going to make the cut when my frame is nearly covered with the leaves. Basically end the first shot when the frame is nearly covered and start the second shot when the frame is nearly covered. The next thing I'm going to do is add a speed ramp to help the shots blend together a little bit more. You don't have to speed ramp these two clips, especially if you get the exposure and color just right, but I am going to because this is not an excellent match. Infonica Pro will use the retiming tool to create a speed ramp. Press Shift B where you want the clip to start picking up speed and transitioning, and press Shift B on the second clip around the frame where you'd like to slow down to normal speed. The amount you increase the speed is going to be up to you and is definitely dependent on what you're going for, so I cannot really give you an exact number. Just remember that these sliders here allow for a more gradual build in speed if you extend them and a more abrupt change in speed if you shorten them. The idea is just to play around with the speed and the sliders to see what looks good for your clips. Something else you can do to make this transition a little smoother and a little more seamless is just to add a simple cross dissolve between the two. I realize that the cross dissolve gets a lot of hate but do not underestimate it. It definitely comes in handy in certain situations. The second transition is a very simple one. It is a whip pan which essentially is going to to use the natural motion blur you get from moving a camera if you're shooting in a cinematic frame rate like 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second and it is going to allow you to blend those two shots together just from that same motion ideally come with the same motion try and come with the same speed so I'm gonna go ahead and ask this lady if I can film her real quick is it okay if I film okay yeah so she gave me a nod everything is in the clear so I'm gonna record her Cleaning this here. Wait till she grabs another dish. One eternity later. So I'm gonna do a little dolly out, see her cleaning, and I'm gonna whip it down like this. Whip it out of frame, and I'm gonna come with that same motion, kind of at the same angle, and that should help to blend those two together with a little motion blur. We're gonna try this here. I'm gonna whip it in this motion. Here we go. And whipping down. Nope, not fast enough. Generally, you want it to be the same speed. All right, here we go. Oops, sorry. Okay. Here we go, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to whip in that same motion. Whipping down. Okay. So if you match the speed and motion of these two clips, you will not even need to do too much to make them blend together. So what I'm going to do is make a cut. I'll make a cut right about here, and then on the following shot, I'll make a cut right when I start to move in that downward, kind of at an angle motion. So maybe right about here. And let's take a look at that. 
So pretty seamless actually and what's nice is um, in this shot you have this red bucket and when it kind of pans down this red thing comes in the way so it kind of tricks your eye into thinking that it is all part of the shot and you're looking at the same shot between. But the reason this transition is different from the first is just due to the fact that these two shots are blended together solely from the motion blur whereas the first transition matches the color and exposure with this one. The color and the exposure doesn't necessarily have to be the same since the camera will be moving so fast. So here at the end of this, you have this pink kind of uh, uh, brightly lit, I don't know what this is, part of the wall. And then in this shot is the very dark umbrella. Yet when you play it back, because I'm moving the camera so quickly, it blends very nice. And you can even add something in between to make it a little more seamless, but to be honest, you really don't even need to. This last transition is a simple mask transition. So you're gonna be doing this, creating this mostly in the editing room, but when you're out shooting, you wanna find something that will come across the frame essentially you are going to cut out the outline of whatever is coming across the frame put the second clip underneath it'll make them seem like they're one clip so i'm going to wait for someone to come across my frame here which should happen fairly quickly and then i'm going to mask that out in editing software so let me pull that up okay and just to make it a little more cinematic i'm just going to do a nice dolly out oh this lady get this lady real quick nice dolly out there we go okay before i do any masking i'm actually going to accentuate this dolly out by using the transform tool to crop in a little bit so i'll start at the beginning of my frame i'm going to keep it generally um, center framed for the most part i'm going to make sure to press the keyframe button blah blah button <laughs> and after this woman passes I am going to um, bring this back down and because I pressed the keyframes, all of that was saved. So basically that just gives me a little bit more of a, a little bit more length on this dolly out. With masking, you'll pull up your masking tool in whatever editing software you're using. In Final Cut Pro, press Command 5 to bring up the effects. Drag the mask effect to your footage and you want to go to the point in that first clip where the object going in front of the frame reveals the outline that you want to cut out. So for us with this woman, it is this frame right here where the end of the woman's back starts to show. Next, I'm gonna mask out the outline of her back and I can help to curve these points by pressing command and drag. I'm also gonna extend out the outline so that when the object moves across the frame, the whole screen is filled with what you want to play underneath. Once that's done, we'll click invert mask so everything inside the outline is cut out and I will press original so we can see what we're doing when we are animating this mask. Press the keyframe buttons, go over three frames, adjust your mask, go over three frames, adjust, and so on. You may need to go back and tweak the position of the outline because Final Cut Pro just guesses the movement of the mask. After that, add your second clip underneath your first clip, and to finish it off, you could add a little bit of a directional blur onto the beginning of the second clip. That'll just make the two shots blend together a little bit more seamlessly. Those were three simple but smooth transitions you guys can use in your videos. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. If you enjoyed the video, press the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. I will see you guys next Friday. Have a great week, guys.